All right, so I want to show you some options on how to use CGX to kind of get the color direction that you want. Now, if you've seen our other videos, and I hope you'll watch them, CGX is all about color exploration. What does that mean? It means that we can you, you can use CGX to randomize different looks, yes, on color, but also on the amount of saturation, brightness, and contrast, and you can tweak and tailor all of those settings to get, you know, to modify the different exploratory elements that you're getting, you can tweak and change. Not to mention the entire create tab, which is a little more direct. So you can explore with a little more purpose and intent, right? But on explore, we have the randomization sliders. Now, as a reminder, the way they work is we can hit the bottom double arrows, which is full random. It'll cycle everything, the highlight, shadows, colors, and then the four settings below. It will cycle them completely random based on some parameters that we have determined tend to yield pretty decent results, right? So go ahead and show you just to be thorough. If I hit full random, we get all kinds of potential looks. And it's, you know, it's not a hundred percent literally as random as the data could possibly be. It's throttled a little bit, throttled a little bit, excuse me, to see if you can get some decent results that send you in different directions. Like I said, but let's go ahead and delete it for a second because I want to show you a scenario that might happen to you. I'm going to turn off this layer for the moment. Let's say you finish your edit. You got all your skin clean up and it's done. And you kind of have a muted vibe based on the raw work that you did. Um, you have a, a kind of a low contrast vibe because of the backlit. Um, there's a, a board behind her, but there's like windows on each side and above her, which you can see. And it created some haze into the lens. So it's a hazy look and it's fine. But let's say you intentionally, deliberately add contrast with like levels. There's one example. I've added a little bit of contrast with levels. So now I want to explore color, but I know that the contrast is solid. I, I'm really particular about the contrast on the shot. Um, it has a perfect, delicate balance of contrast. I, I don't really want options. I know I like the contrast, but I want to explore color and potentially brightness. So instead of hitting full random and it changing the contrast, we can start without it. So the little eye next to it, next to contrast, you push that, that is your toggle on and off. It doesn't just turn it off once it exists, once the layer exists, it keeps it from happening. So now I've turned it off. These sliders mean nothing down below. So let's say I want to keep the brightness roughly the same, but I want options. I want a muted look, so I don't want a whole lot of color, but I want some. And then my intensity, I kind of want it from potentially low to kind of medium low, something like that. I think I want my highlights to potentially be cyan or green. I want to see some options there to see if it helps neutralize some of that warmth, but I think it'd be cool either way. And because there's such a warm tone and some blue jeans, I'm going to see about maybe like a reddish purplish blue options. I want to see what happens, but crucially, we chose our contrast, if you will, because we have this layer out modifying the contrast. So we turn it off. Now, instead of using the double arrows, we use the play button. So watch this. You hit play. And now we start seeing all kinds of color variations in the ranges that I picked. And then intensity, saturation, and brightness. But as I choose, excuse me, as I hit play over and over, the contrast we set is basically untouched. Now you might think, well, you have a contrast slider here, or rather a contrast option. Why not start with that? You can absolutely start with that. You can have all the options on. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. But if you know that you're locked into your contrast, you don't have to pick it. You know, and even if you know you're locked into your brightness, you can turn it off now. And when you continue hitting play, you simply get saturation and color intensity of, of the hue angles that you picked. So it's, it's exploratory in a direct way. You can decide what you want to explore. More to the point, let's say I don't have a contrast layer. Just delete that real quick. Okay, let's say you just want to explore contrast, which is a little weird because CGX is, I know, focused on color. But let's say you just want to explore contrast. Well, you turn, oh, excuse me, you turn everything off except contrast. <laughs> and then you hit play and you literally get randomization of contrast. So as much as we love color, let me make it kind of crazy so we can see more options. As much as we love to explore color, you can also just explore contrast. They might think, why would I do that? It's the same exact philosophy of exploring color. You might look at your shot and go, it needs something, but I don't know what the something is. And maybe contrast exploration will do that. So let's say, for example, 
again, I'm going to give you an example workflow. Let's say we dial in the color that we want. We don't want much. We, we know what we want. So we come here, let's say selective color and we dial in some kind of grade that we feel sort of works for us and, and we're happy with it. Let me see. I'm, I'm just kind of playing with this and then there we go. Now, so we decided we have a grade that we sort of like, right? But now we're not sure about the contrast. Let's go to extreme for the minute, uh, leave it on. And now we hit play and keep hitting play. We have our color that we chose, but we can use CGX to explore contrast. Yeah, on full maximum, it gets a little crazy. But let's say I want some contrasty looks, but I don't know how much. And you might think, why would you not know how much contrast you want? I don't know. Why wouldn't you know what color you want? It is a creative exploration. And also don't forget that you can do this uh, not in reverse order, but just in a different way. So if you choose that you don't want contrast up front and you start exploring without contrast because you've already made that choice, great. But if you haven't made that choice, you can just turn it off later. You're like, you know what? I don't think I want contrast options and you turn it off and then you can just keep playing. And now you won't get any contrast modification. That's the key thing. The key element about CGX is that flexibility. You never know what you want to explore. You can literally explore just saturation, which doesn't add any color grading of any kind with the wheels, but you can literally explore different saturations. Oops, that's brightness, my fault. You can explore different saturations. See, it, just, it depends on how you want to use it. Full exploration or decide that you don't want anything except color. You're happy with the saturation of the image, the initial saturation, and you're not sure about the intensity. Now the intensity will modify saturation a little bit, but now you're just simply playing with hue angles and seeing how the saturation falls based on how the curves are calculated. There's so many choices. It's not just all or nothing. That's why we have two different ways of exploring. We actually have three because even on create, just as another reminder, um, I'm going to go ahead and reset that. <clears throat> even on the create option, you can say, uh, I want roughly red and roughly cyan. Immediately get feedback so you can see what's going on. Keep the intensity here. Maybe a little saturation, darken it a little bit. Hue shift to the right. Now the hue shift will not change. That's more of a corrective thing. Okay. And maybe a little contrast. And now if you hit the play button, it'll cycle near that. So create, it's a little more organic. You don't make a lot of choices, but you kind of can dial something in and then shake it up a little bit until you get something that you really like. Right. And if you go to explore, all that's brought over here, and then you can continue to explore in different ranges if you want. Gosh, the options are so basically limitless, like beyond limitless, literally quadrillions of options that you could never run into twice. We do have a history, so you can go backwards in your history. If you do think, oh, you know what, I want to try a little bit, but I kind of like that one. Well, you can always go back to roughly 30 steps. So CGX is about exploration and inspiration. And depending how you use it, you might come up with a different approach that works in your workflow. It is not locking you into one way of using it. You can do it as many different ways as you can imagine. <music>